broken bottle stop. Hmm. Okay, Mum, is this something? I feel like it is. Oh my goodness! <gasps> It looks like some sort of creature, doesn't it? Cow? Is it a cow? I don't think it's a cow. It's Where's got like a, a, a... I can't see its face, but it's got a, it like an arched a... back. What is that? <gasps> what is that? <gasps> it's not a cow. <laughs> That's like a some sort of mythical beast. Yes, it is, isn't it? Oh, like yeah, it looks like a werewolf. werewolf. <laughs> That is very cool. Let me see. Wow. I don't know. It's a wolf, a wolf, but what? a wolf. He looks like a wolf. That's. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Wow, it's cool though. It looks like a werewolf. It, looks it does like look. It does look, does look like a werewolf. A mythical creature. Mythical creature. A werewolf. <laughs> Yeah. That's your first one like that. Like loads of them. Hmm, that's got writing on it, hasn't it? <laughs> Like a plate, yeah? Yeah, I can see something limited. Ooh, That'd yes, be cool. Yes, it does. Okay. Wow. What a good start. Oh. Does that light look like it might be tin glaze? I think that might be. That's very old. That's a very old piece of pottery. Wow. Ah, <laughs> oh, very squished. I just don't have to. He is so squished. Oh, oh I don't know. I might take him for now. A bit sorry for him. <laughs> Nestled, disguised as an R white. Yes, it is. It's an R white machine vulcanite stopper. Hmm. We do have a lot of these though. So I'll probably leave it. But I haven't found one in a while, so that's cool. Some really beautifully coloured glass on this beach. It's not quite smooth yet, so I'm going to leave it. But beautiful. That's so funny. Can you see the recognisable colouring shapes sticking out amongst the brown stones? <laughs> Let's go get him. Is he going to say anything? Oh, what swirly one? Rings. I'm not sure we've got that one. Probably do, I must. But we have so many vulcanites. Oh, they're really quite, like, quite a nice printing the way we've used them. Mm. Okay, no, nope, I'm gonna have to take it because we could make really nice printing. <laughs> It's just a Kate. <laughs> Is that just a collar of copper? Yeah, I might clean it and see. Might be. Might be. 
love mysterious metal. Another squished one, but he's broken. He's too twished. I think that is a sea f a fossil sea sponge, but it looks like a bead. <laughs> Found a few of these here. It does look like a bead though, and they did use them as beads. There's another one really close to it. <laughs> that one doesn't have a hole in it though. <laughs> Some coral. It's a weird odd mix of fossils and natural things on this beach as well as odd larking finds. That's a piece of coral. Okay, I think that's actually a bead opposed to one of the bead fossils. It is! It's a white bead. Ooh, I think it's glass. Actually, no way, talking about beads, what are the chances? I think that is a bead too. Oh, that's one of those beautiful ones. It's one of the sort of mottled glass ones. Look at that. Is that part of it? Oh, that's like a piece of glass either fused to it or part of the bead. Wow, that is beautiful. Huh. It's such a good day already. It's crazy. Huh. It's a tiny little funny face. <laughs> Cute. Okay, that's an unexpected find. Oh, I wonder how much there is and if it's plain. Let's have a look. It's plain, but really unexpected for here. <laughs> it's a pipe bowl. Look at that. Wow, okay. Cool. What is that? <laughs> is that coral? Oh. So, yeah. It's quite straight there. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely piece. I came down to look at the sponge wear. Hmm. Good and study. Like yeah. It's like a mini volcano. <laughs> I found a good metal patch with some interesting looking bits. So, let's have a look at what's here. obviously something to do with electrics but it does make a good small stoneware bottle um, I saw a oh, I saw a bag seal oh yeah post office bag seal let's see what else there is oh um a air gun pellet which make good pawns for my chest set lid playing there Piece of chain. Okay, as you can see, I've been doing some scraping. Got the um, inside of a coral, which is amazing. Um, uh, but I just had this up, and I don't know 
if it's something exciting. To me, that looks like an interesting shape with something on it and it almost looks like the back is like a bag or something. Right? That looks like something, doesn't it? I'll ask mum, but I think that might be a badge. Big buckle. It's just a little patch of goodies. I think that's part of a broken button. Um, the end of a zip. Um, uh, possibly part of a split pin. Then there's this. I don't know what that is. It's definitely a shape. Might have something on it, might not. But that's quite cool. Mysterious metals again. I think I'll take the end of the zip. Of a hair clip, maybe, or part of a tie pin. And another split pin. <laughs> I'll get my tool, I think. Piece of chain sticking out this. Let's have a tap and see. <laughs> That's cool. It doesn't say anything, it's just a number, but it's still a tag. That's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this. Ooh. Yeah. That is a shape. It's a shape, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yours? Mm. This. Ooh. Oh, yeah, with the round yeah. thing. Yeah. You think it is? Like, think if it you look is, at the top, it? yeah, that's not broken, is it? That's no, the shape, yeah. and it looks like it's got stuff on it. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think it is. Yeah. That back. That back yeah. for sure. Do you want to put it in my box? Yes, please. Nice. A badge. Thanks. This is an interesting bit. I wonder what that would have been from. <laughs> I just dug it out and not unfortunately. Anything on it? Oh, it doesn't say anything, mm. it's just a number, but still a tag. Oh, it looks like it could be pretty. Well, cleaned up. And it is a complete hollow one. A spoon. A round seal with some letters on. A bag seal. That's interesting. I wonder if it's typeface. Because it's back to front. Hmm. I'll ask Kate about that. I think I may have just found something exciting. It looks exciting. Oh, it does look <laughs> exciting. That's what a clip of a clip. shoe, I think. Like a shoe that's clip. Beautiful. Ooh. That's marker set. That's lovely. Yeah. Oh. 
And it's still got so many of the base gems. That's really nice. Ooh, beautiful. Wow. Nice. <laughs> it does look like typeface because it's back to front. Yeah. It's got a hole in it. It's weird. It's like it would have been into something and then, you know. Interchangeable. Yeah. It says two and six. six. And what about this one? Is that just a, is that a tire weight or a piece of typeset? Was it rub, um, rubbed away? I think it was a piece of typeset. But but it's it rubbed away. Yeah. Oh well. That one's cool though. <laughs> uh huh. Interesting pieces, tube top. And another thing that looks like it could be interesting. Oh gosh. Oh, I think it's just a, um, I don't know what that is, but it is flower shaped. So it is pretty. Is that my first coin of the day? Oh, I'd say it is. And actually, I don't recognize that. If it's a coin, it's not an English coin. Oh, that should clean up really nicely. Obviously it's missing the top, but I can almost just about make out the writing like that. Let's have another look. It's got a triangle on it. That's exciting. I can see that that's got writing on too. Ooh, okay. Let's look around here. Does that look like it's going to be a pen nib? Oh no, how much of it is there? Ooh, the whole thing is there. Does it have any writing on it? I think it does, but it needs a clean. Beautiful, I love a pen nib, but they're so delicate. I wonder what was written with that. I wonder what that is. Oh, is it a button? Looks like the back of a button. Oh, that's beautiful. Let me clean it a bit. That is, that's a beautiful button. The shank missing. It's like a sun. Actually, it's a piece of chain. Ooh, good spot. I have found um, this. So if you turn that over, it's not English if it is a coin. You can see a triangle and some writing on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, um, a button with the shank missing, but it's like an old thing and, and a pen nib. Oh, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I found something like that. Yeah. Nice. That's oh. Doing better than me. That's why I brought you to the spot. <laughs> Let's go. Not sure if this is the shirt or not. I think. <laughs> it says one and all. How weird is that? What's that? Maybe it's somebody's motto. It says one and all. Yeah, it's not the yeah, it's not the musketeers. <laughs> oh. How weird is that? Wow, and it's got a bump. It's like a ship. 
Ooh. Ooh, it could be intriguing. Find that, it looks like it might be interesting. Yes, but also difficult to find. Not yeah. Not to find, but probably worth it. Yeah. Nice. Chain. Cool little finding. Don't know what would have been on the end of it, but quite sweet. That could end up being something, it could end up being nothing. I don't want to rub it. Hmm. Have to wait and see if it's got anything on it. So a couple of pieces here. Is this going to be typeface? Oh, it is. <laughs> what does it say? I think it says QP. No. Deep. It would be backwards. Maybe it's a, a uppercase Q and a lowercase Q. Or B. Something B. Hmm. But it is typeface. Um, we've got a squished t tube top and um, a non squished tube top with the lid still on. Both lids, so we'll take them. A piece of metal it might have something on it, probably doesn't. There's the piece. Um, obviously broken, but. One of my and mum's favourite things to find. Oh, and it looks like a different kind. A key. Oh, it almost looks like it has a picture of a... Oh, wait a minute. Almost like it has a picture of a bird on it there. It's a picture on one side, not writing. The other one has writing that we'll be able to get when we clean it up. But if that's got a bird, that's my new favourite key and I might mount down into a necklace. <laughs> be the site of the typeset. I think this one might be two one two. Yeah, I both have something written on them. I'll clean them up and look at them. In fact that one might be typeset, but this one is in back to front. <laughs> it's just ten by twenty. It's just ten by twenty. <laughs> so that can't be typeset. I don't know what that is. But there's more here. What's this one? Can't tell what that says at this point, but this is that another piece? There's <laughs> just lots of it here. <laughs> I'll have to look at them when they're cleaned up. See if I can find some more here. <laughs> That's like two late bag seals put together. <laughs> Actually quite a lot of metal here. Is that another one? No. Hmm. I keep finding them. There's like two more here. I mean, I don't know. That that's just a piece of metal, but there's this piece. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look at them all when I get home. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's loads of them here. You can help me find them. Okay. <laughs> Some of them I don't think have anything on them. Some of them do. One of them isn't back to front. One says 10 by 20. <laughs> so what's that? Tire weight? Is that what tire weight? I don't know. Maybe. But that one isn't. That one is back to, but well, the big one's back to front though, isn't it? Oh, you've had a key. Oh. Yay. No, it's not. It's not back to front. No, it says BB and Co 12. Maybe there's tire weights. Maybe it's a tire weight. Key, but look, it's got a picture of like a bird or something. Oh, that's right. beautiful. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That's really nice, yeah. yeah. I can look here, it's quite a good okay. spot. I'm going to come and sit on the other side. There's a seal. No, top of the lid. See, that looks exciting. I think, I think it's just part of a light bulb, possibly, but it's smooth. It's, it's got a circle, and you can't see it here. <laughs> I'll get my phone torch out. It is 
purple or red? Is it purple or red? Can't tell, but it's beautiful. So that's amazing. Very good nail. Round seal with letters on. There's a square one. Um, I saw air gun pellet. More lead. No way! That looks like it might be another beautiful, broken but beautiful example of one of mine and mum's favourite things. It's another beautiful little key. Oh, what does it say? It's a Basco key and it looks like it's got a long word. That's very exciting, another beautiful key. Broken, but the important bit's there. I have a like lead bag seal and a bit of coral, more coral. Okay, I'm going to take this lump because it looks like a shape to me. I'm going to soak it and see. I mean, I did that once before and it turned into a lion's head, so I don't know. Give it a go. Mysterious round object could be something. Another could be the um, typeface, but might be a tire weight. I don't know. And then the mysterious lump. A nice piece of chain. Like that piece. There's lots of tiny pieces here. Quite strange, Kate's found a. <laughs> I, think that, I think someone put that here. I imagine that's not vintage. It's pretty though. I found a gemstone. Well, not a gemstone, but a polished stone. Like the, your event. What was it? Aventurine? Oh no, what was it called? Malachite. I don't know what that stone that is. Did? Yeah. I wonder what type of stone that is. Moonstone. It's no, like I don't know. That's blue. <laughs> oh, and it's got like veins. This is Gem Beach now. Yeah. How weird is that? Oh, it's so beautiful. I wonder what type it is. Don't know. I'm sure we can find out. That's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> I think it's blue lace agate. Oh, I found an agate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Blue lace agate. It's beautiful. I mean, it could be old. It I could mean, be. Know. You know, there's 20 stuff here, and it was. Yeah. Who knows? What does that stand for? I don't know off the top of my head. I'll find out. Agate stones are sometimes called the earth rainbow. Mm. It's a colourful band of nature create nearly every colour that the earth can produce. Cool. Mm -hmm. Purposes of healing and ornamentation. Augmentation or, or ornamentation? Ornamentation. Healing, though. So the colour representative of feelings of calmness and tranquility. Oh. Which is funny because I've been taking so many arty shots today because it's just. It's like almost silent here and there's nothing and it's sort of almost bleak but in a very tranquil way. Yeah, so, I'd, yeah. I'd been using it because I haven't really been finding much. It's all med meditative. <laughs> It's also cool to the touch, which many believe will aid in helping the stone's bearer keep a cool and calm head. Oh, God, I need that. Yes. <laughs> we both need that. Um, a number of other meanings, many of which have to do with a sense of renewal. These include unity, cleansing, hope, protection, harmony, optimism, positivity, appreciation for the natural world. Oh, which, yeah. Purification, promptness, 
a soothing mm. flow of energy, joy and truth. Wow. So, a lot, a lot. Okay, I'm going to carry it with me everywhere. An emotional facelift. Ah, oh, I need that! <laughs> Healing and building strong emotional health in order to keep physical health in check. Crystals linked to the heart chakra. Mm. It's referred to as the ultimate penicillin for soothing the pain and confusion that comes with the human condition. Oh, wow, this is a lot for one tiny stone. <laughs> nice. The stone is also said to release any fears of performing in front of others. Oh. <laughs> wow, okay, there's so many other stuff, okay. but I'd say, yeah. Maybe we can talk about them when they're round up. How amazing. Cool. That was me just picking up a shiny stone like a magpie. <laughs> so for shared stories this week, we have a shared with a shield and a scroll that says one and all. And this shield is the Cornwall coat of arms and it's a crusader shield which on which are 15 golden bezants which are like golden coins in the shape of a triangle and the motto one and all it's a very cool motto it's a very cool motto but it's not musketeers that's one for all yeah? yes <laughs> one all for one and one for all yes not that so the shared story this week Unfortunately, it isn't about the actual shirt because it could be any sort of Cornish pottery. But it is instead about where these symbols come from and basically a bit of a history on Cornwall. Cool. <laughs> so the story of the 15 Bezants occurs during the Crusades when the Duke of Cornwall was captured by the Saracens and a ransom of 15 Bezants they're named after Byzantium, just gold coins, was demanded. And the people of Cornwall all came together to raise the 15 Bezants to pay the ransom. And they did, they raised it, it was paid, and the Duke was set free. And because the people had all helped together to raise the money, hence the motto, one and all, because they all did it together. But it's difficult to verify that is an idea of the story because apparently richard joined the sixth crusade and went to the holy land he fought in no battles but managed to negotiate for the release of prisoners and the burials of crusaders killed at a battle in gaza in 1239 wow. so it's it's a nice idea but no one knows if it's the True truth there is another so these arms with the, Bezant with the Bezants were designed in the 15th century based on the arms of Richard, Earl of Cornwall. Right. And apparently a good explanation of the emblem of Cornwall is given by A. Fox Davis in his book of public arms. He says, another explanation is, in the early days of the earlier Plantagenets, mm -hmm. the pawnbrokers of Cornwall were the most enterprising and prosperous merchants in all of England. When King John desired to hypothecate his crown jewels to raise money for a war in France, five of the principal uncles of Cornwall, Ben Levy of Truro, Ben Ezra of Penzance, Moses of Megavisi, Sorry. <laughs> the other two names are illegible, which is unfortunate, <laughs> formed an association, the Ancient and Honourable Association of Pawnbrokers, to take over his debts. The trademark of the company was 15 bulls with the motto, one and all, to indicate that no business could be arranged without a quorum of all five members. Oh, oh that's slightly less romantic. Yes, it is. <laughs> when Edward I ascended the throne, this association was the most powerful in Cornwall. That prince, following his usual policy of exalting the merchant class, chose the trademark of the Ancient and Honourable Association of Pawnbrokers to be the coat of arms of County of Cornwall. Oh. So, wh whichever one you choose to go with... I'd probably, it's probably the pawnbrokers, isn't it? Po most, most likely, because yeah. there is actual evidence of the manuscript. Yeah. But unfortunately, only three of the five members which just sucks, doesn't it? Imagine yeah. being that part of history and you, you happen to be the unlucky two that yeah. get... Wiped out. Yeah, of history. So yeah, there is the history of the Cornwall 
coat of arms and where one and all comes from. And Cornwall has made some beautiful pottery. I mean, Cornish wear oh, yeah. is... Yeah. And motto wears Cornish, isn't it? Is, is it? it? <laughs> <laughs> is it? I think it is. That possibly. Or is it Devon? Is it Devon? <laughs> okay. I got it, just in time. Um, because the clay is found, in the red clay found in an area of Torquay in Devon. Yeah. Okay. But Cornish wear is beautiful and we have some, don't we? So Cornish wear is the famous blue and white stripy. Ridged. Slightly yes. ridged. Beautiful pottery. So there is our sherd story today. Not actually about the sherd, which has seen better days, but I just think it's very cool. And again, something I did not know. No, I did not know that. I, I didn't know. Hence why when I heard it, we both instantly were like, musketeers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was the sherd story of the week. Well, that was a trip to... What is the name of that beach? I'm kind of feeling like calling it Gem Beach. <laughs> Gem Beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, or is it Metal Beach? Maybe it's Metal Beach. Um, yeah, well, again, mysterious finds. We didn't know what they were till we got home, and then it's like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although one is still a mystery find. Which one's a mystery find? Oh, what, the collar? No, my favourite find. Oh, yeah, the werewolf. <laughs> I guess we'll start with this one. What is this? Mr. Caboodler seems to think that it's probably from a hunting and it's like a dog that's like got its hackles up. But I mean, look at look at that muscle and like the, the ridged back with the hair. It, it's it a werewolf. It doesn't look like <laughs> a dog's face. I don't know, it could be some... It, that, it just looks... I don't think... I don't know what it is. I, yeah, I don't think it's a werewolf, but it looks like a werewolf. I don't know if it's some other mythical creature. Maybe it's a... like a hyena? <laughs> I know that's not a mythical creature, but... I don't know. Well, it looks like like a Japanese like interpretation of... Mm -hmm. That's how... Yeah, or Chinese... Mm. Like a kinit... kinit? Kitsune. That's yeah. a fox. So, that's not a fox. No, 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 no. The ivory things they used to keep their belts on, not. Oh. Uh, could, 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 oh. <laughs> no, not. Yeah, no, they, they used to make ivory objects and they used them for things and they looked a bit like that. Mm -hmm. Can it, this is ceramic. Can it, uh, it's like bisque. Please let us know in the comments down below what you think this is. <laughs> we are we really, really, really keen to know people's ideas or if they've seen anything like it before. It's weird. <laughs> it's very strange. What was your favourite find? I didn't find that much, but I, I there was two mysterious ones. I mean, I like the... Uh -huh. um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, probably the plaque. This is, this plate is so cool. So this says the Marconi phone stage. We don't know if it's one stage or two stage voice amplifier. PS number M80 um, 077. That's Sunny Cat <laughs> with a cardboard box. Oops. Um, it says Marconi wireless telegraph. Tele yeah, Marconi wireless telegraph, London. So, what is a Marconi? I mean, obviously a Marconi phone is a voice amplifier. So it's probably from the 1920s. Oh, single stage. I think it probably is a single stage voice amplifier in the 19... Did I say 1940s? You said 1920s. Oh, uh, that's the answer, 1920s, yes. <laughs> um, and I think it's an NB1, that's what it says there. You can just make that out, amplifier. And apparently I'm looking at a example of one and the labels give the following information. BBC approval by the Postmaster General. So BBC is British Broadcasting Company. Um, GPO registered number 3285. GPO is General Post Office. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, Marconi Faux Co Limited London. 
So basically, in the early days of radio um, broadcasting, they needed an amplifier for to magnify the music or speech received by the detector sufficiently to operate a loudspeaker. So to make your... Basically, you know, like an amp these days. That for electric guitar is the only thing I really know people use amps for anymore. And it was called the Marconi phone. And Marconi is for now. How do we say this? Guillermo? Is that like a, a way of saying Guillermo? Maybe. Um, Giovanni Mar Maria Marconi, first Marquis of Marconi. And he was an Italian inventor and electrical engineer known for his creation of a practical radio wave based wireless telegraph system. And he is credited as being the inventor of radio. In 1909, he shared the Nobel Prize in Physics with Carl Ferdinand Braun. In 1931, he set up Vatican Radio for Pope Pius VI. <laughs> so, yeah, he, if you, he, too much history to go in about, but he was a very cool man. And, yeah, basically invented radio. And this is from a Marconi phone in the 1920s. So, amazing. Yeah. Big, really, good. really cool. Yeah. Very exciting indeed. Your second favourite fact? Um, ooh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Both of, like, two of my other finds, I probably, actually, my coin that is not, in fact, a coin. This actually is, I mean, I don't know if it's a token or a medal. I don't know how you'd describe it. But on the front, it says pro... Another difficult word. V Valetudine? Valeudine? Pro Valeudine, which is Latin for having good health. And on the back it says Life Boy at the top for merit, clean hands campaign along the bottom. And this dates to the 1920s again. And basically, the Lever Brothers launched their Clean Hands campaign in 1926 to educate the public about the importance of hand washing to defend against disease and poor hygiene. And this Clean Hands campaign was not run in England, it was an American thing. And the hand washing campaign extended into school activities and promotional clubs. And the use of badges and certificates of merit were strong promotional incentives too. So basically, someone in America in the, 90, in the 1920s received this for washing their hands. How? <laughs> and learning up. about the importance of washing their hands. And obviously someone was so proud of it, or maybe just a coincidence, but ended up bringing it to the year to Kent. <laughs> it's really, really weird, really weird. There's, there's a couple of American things. Lots of American keys. Yeah. And the padlock was American as well, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So this is an American badge token medal for washing your hands. Which I just think is really cool. And so very random. And I, m more exciting to me than a, than a coin. Maybe there was an American that lived around there and threw his rubbish threw away. Threw all of the rubbish, all of their rubbish away. Yeah, I think it's very cool. A hand washing badge. <laughs> and an, an example of another. Did we find this there? Yeah. We did. And this is Samson Novelty Holborn. Free for, use for a arcades. Yeah. For a free play on any machine. It's one of those tokens that you would pay your money to get these to put into sort of arcade machines. Which is amazing. So now we can add, obviously not in as good condition, but readable. Another oh, washing hands. And I will come back to other exciting ones, but on the topic of American finds... No, not a key. Not another American <laughs> key. That's crazy. So this key here that I found, that's a Basco key, on the back it says, made by Riggs and Stratton Corp, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, USA, 1395. And Briggs and Stratton Corporation made um, sort of car doors and ignitions and basically sort of prior to them every lock or ignition of a car um needed individual keys oh my goodness a nightmare which imagine how crazy that <laughs> yeah. is and briggs and stratton came up with the master key ah. so so basically yeah each lock of a car required a separate key 
and so you can imagine getting into a car and starting up would be time consuming and overwhelming. So as a solution, Briggs and Stratton offered a, offered a system that could be on that could be installed on any new car manufactured with its locks. So it came up with um, cylinder locks. For a 75 cent fee, the owner could streamline his keychain by ordering a master key that could open every lock on the car. And many owners took advantage of this opportunity to streamline their hefty keychain. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this is a master key or just an ignition key. It it's looks tiny. It looks like a small ignition key. Does it? I think so, yes. Tiny! But this is a key. That number, unfortunately, probably denotes what car or part oh. it does. But this is based, I think it's an ignition key from a car from a, in America in the 1920s. It's tiny. Why is it so small? Weird. Mm. That was strange. I did not know that. So, unfortunately, this other key has a picture of maybe a heron or a stork. Um, this one is made in China. And I can't... Um, find anything about that key. I need to go back. Well, it's my... Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> we've got to our second favourite find now. Um, well, the agate for me, I suppose. Your blue lace agate, which we have already spoken Talk about. At length. At <laughs> length. But I didn't, what I didn't mention is apparently until a couple of years ago, they thought that blue lace agate had been all mined out. But there wasn't any more blue lace agate until they found a big... Um, what's it called? Mine? Deposit of it in um, oh. South Africa. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And Mum carries around the malachite one. The yeah. bag that I always carry around with me. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> super, slightly superstitious. Yes, that has um, mudlarking. Oh not yeah, not just, all. Not, the, not all. In, so not. there is. It was the malachite that I found at the same beach. Hence why we're calling it Gem Beach. Look how beautiful they are. And it's always exciting that it's not. They're not like. Tiger's eye or something. They're no, crystals that I proper, yeah. don't, I've never owned. Yeah, it's very exciting. In here is also the lucky pixie that Mum found at this beach. <laughs> so almost beach. entirely yeah. this bag, because I imagine this is going to go in there now. So now the blue lace agate goes in that bag. <laughs> so second my, well, I've already said my second. This is my third favourite. Oh yeah, <laughs> is my badge, which has is a badge, and it says Biff. <laughs> It says Biff Buyer. Although maybe it doesn't say Biff Buyer. What does it say? I think it says Biff Overseer. Oh. I think you can just see it says Biff Over... Is Overseer a word? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. So, this will have been... Blue enamel, opposed to red enamel. Okay. And Biff stands for British Industry Fair. Wrong again. <laughs> it doesn't say it doesn't say overseer. It says Biff overseas buyer. Oh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna Not guess American. I'm no. gonna guess this was an American <laughs> person that came over with their key and their clean <laughs> hands. Junkins. <laughs> they had really clean and hands. And their padlock. And a fancy car. <laughs> and uh, they came to buy some British made stuff. <laughs> yeah. We got a whole storyline. <laughs> And I'm going to say this was a luggage tag from them. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> so basically, Biff is for the British Indus Industries Fair, um, British Industries Fair trade, and we need to clean it up some more because we all again ran out of time. But hopefully, if you can get, it looks like the back might clean up, and it would have the buyer's registration number, so the individual number for. What this, it was, then we'd know if he yes, was American. Yes. So, yes, this would um, have red enamel because it was a buyer. And the first Biff took place in 1915 at Castle Bromwich in Birmingham. And after World War I, they had become annual two week events. It was interrupted by the outbreak of World War II in 1939 and resumed in 1947. And its final exhibition took place in 1959. It had its own purpose-built exhibition halls at Castle Bromwich and they were a trade and industry showcase exhibition for British manufacturers as well as her dominions and colonies because basically they started to notice that they weren't making as much stuff in England yeah, we... around that time and they wanted to 
improve that. They were heavily sponsored by the government's Board of Trade as well as the Department for Overseas Trade to promote British industries both at home and internationally. Hence our overseas buyer. I wonder what you're going to buy. I know. <laughs> they were considered a great success, each attracting thousands of vid visitors and trade buyers from all over Britain and abroad. So, yeah, I wonder. I wonder. What he, what he bought. This clean hand American came Because he obviously to buy. bought something because he got the badge. No, you had the badge. Oh. Um, Just given to you when, when, you, went, when you walked in. Oh. Yeah. Maybe he didn't buy anything then. Maybe not, but we thought we'd just have a quick glance at our other, uh, how our badge collection is growing. It's mad. They're all such strange badges. They're so unusual. <laughs> There's no, none of your standard badges there. I mean the the the, the girl girl guides and the bra and the and the scouts. Is yeah. Like scouts. Yeah, and maybe a sweetheart brooch. Maybe I don't know, but the badges with writing on there, yeah, they're all very strange but yeah we have it's one of our favorite things to find isn't it it is because you never really know what you, you never got. know what's going to be revealed it's very exciting and yeah i the fact it's an overseas one is extra cool we've got um marcus mm -hmm. it's a clip of some yeah sort, i think it, it is yeah shoe clip or um, this, this. Oh, oh yes. yes, sorry. Your. <laughs> I mean, it's not. I don't know. It's uh, it's an odd object. It. I mean, all. I think it's a collar again. Yes. <laughs> Just spit it out, Fleur. I think it's a collar, like our other collar. But a cat collar this but time. But a cat it's collar. So small. Yeah. But it. It looks like it's got letters. That bit had. Um, like lead on it, but it all perished off. But mm -hmm. it, it's got the slidey thing. That would have, you know, you could have made it bigger and smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that looks. I don't know if it is or it isn't. Like it may have had letters at yeah. a point, potentially a pet name. But it's not there anymore. Well, you have to see that that bit compared to what you know, because it probably would have been maybe hand or yeah. something. But you can see how much more perished this bit is. Then the rest of it. Yeah. And it's not because it's bent, because this is the most bent bit here and it's not perished. So it's almost like it, that, that bit of the surface has been compromised yeah. and that's why it's not there eroded, it's damaged more than the rest of it. I'd quite like to bend it back into shape, but I'm yeah. a bit scared. You know, to warm it up. So, yeah, along with telling us what this is, let us know in the comments down below if you agree with us that this is a collar. Some beads, some fossil beads, a very pretty spoon, and a complete one. Look how pretty that bit is. It's a very fun spoon. No writing on it though. No, but like, look. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, a very burnt, <laughs> melted bite bowl. It's very unusual find for there though. Really unusual. Multiple bits of chain. Oh, that's fun. Did you find that? Mm -hmm. It's always exciting. Um, hair um, slide. I think this would have been one of those with oh, a what's one of those <laughs> with a bit like like a neck like one of the big necklace ones. Like it would have had a little thing that pulled down oh, and the yeah, top oh, would have yeah, gone like in. A, yeah. yeah, I think that's what that would have been. Are these? Oh, Try a weight or are they? I'm all the, are they something else? I don't really. Some oh, they yeah. say. Well, all this sorts of yeah, this says S B and Co. Should I check? I mean, S B and Co. Seems like it's going to be a long. I imagine there's been a lot of S B S and Co. But maybe if I type in S B and Co. tires. So, for S B and Co. I've got a spice company. So maybe this was a, a herb company. Oh. So maybe they weighed. Herbs for this? Because that one is not back to France, it's not typeface. This one says. It does say 2p. It does say 2p. This one says 2p. And that one says 10 of 20? 10, of 20. 10, 10, 10 20. x 20. The rest of them don't say anything. But, mm. but this one, I think that one is typeface. Yes, because it's, it's back, back to, to front. front. And it says 2 and 6, yeah? Yeah, 1, 9, 8, 2, uh, two 6. One nine eight. 
yeah. And we do, we've had some comments, we do try and stamp these, but quite often they are too damaged for, just doesn't work, does it? No. They're not and, quite, and they've been worn away a bit too much. They're not stamps anyway. And these ones, these aren't, aren't, aren't back to front, so it would just be in reverse. So, yeah, I don't know what they are. <laughs> the nail varnish bottle is quite, the melted one, you can see like the mel the nail varnish in it. I don't know if it was clear or if, if, if it was copper. There's like copper elements, but sometimes you get copper, copper elements. Copper when it's been in yeah. fire. So it might be clear nail varnish. Hmm. Might have been glue, not nail varnish. Oh, maybe. But yeah. <laughs> Um, I think that's some, other than some lead seals. I mean, this button has got words on it, but there's no It does. I can it. just read ham. <laughs> <laughs> it just says ham. <laughs> and yeah, my sort of sun button, which I think is quite old. It looks old to me. Oh, it's the, um... Oh, and the, the natural things. The, the coral. coral. Selection of coral, too. I'm pretty sure that's coral. Yeah, I think it is. Is that brain coral? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's 100% coral. Which is odd again. Why is there pieces of coral mm, there? I know. And the Maybe it was ballast. Maybe. Probably quite a lot of ships. So there were our finds of this day. And yeah, I was very excited about some of them. Yeah. I, yeah. Some of the history is very, very cool. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love, I love beaches like this and when we have days like this because of all of that history from it turns out not just England not no. just Kent from all manner of places I suppose it's probably because of our closeness to London that it's yeah so many people from so many places around the world have existed in this area for basically ever <laughs> um in recorded history at least and I just get so excited you've got the inventor of the radio Cleaning your hands, um, cars. By British. By British, a werewolf. <laughs> I just. <laughs> Dog collar, cat collar. Oh, and then, as in, as you've heard in shared stories, Cornish history. Mm. I just. I find it amazing because the, the social aspect of it is our favourite, isn't it? Social yeah. history, feeling a connection with these people of, of the past. And days like this are the best for that. And I just. I, lo I love the beads, I love the Dolls House things, but just, yeah. Because it's very exciting, doesn't yes, it? Yes, when, when it, yeah. you start soaking it and things start to get revealed and yeah. suddenly you can read things like Overseas Buyer yeah. or <laughs> the name of a Marconi. company. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think it's possibly my favourite thing. So, I have to say a massive thank you. We've reached 26,000 subscribers. Yes, we have. So thank you so much. And we reached 13,000 on the, on other, the channel. other channel too. So yeah, that it means everything and we are so grateful and we appreciate every like, every comment, every subscription. It is such a wonderful thing to be able to do and of course our wonderful Patreons and anyone that donates in other ways. Got some exciting things Planned. happening yeah. and happening. Oh, what the... Mm, oh, yes. <laughs> secrets. Yes, yeah, so... Um, <laughs> Thank you. It, this is all down to you and we really appreciate it. We hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.